Good morning. This is Wednesday, June 23rd. And I'd like to begin by wishing Jimmy and Justina Murray a happy anniversary. It was my uh, honor and my blessing to do your wedding all those number of years ago. And it's a blessing to see how far you two have come in the Lord, both as individuals and as a family. So God bless you kids. I hope you have a great anniversary. Today's devotion is Acquainted with Grief. This is Isaiah 53. He is, speaking to Jesus, of Jesus, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. Did you know that's the only physical description of Jesus in the Bible? There is no other physical description. Isaiah 53, it's a describing of Jesus. We are not acquainted with grief in the same way our Lord was acquainted with it. We endure it and live through it, but we do not become intimate with it. At the beginning of our unsaved lives, we do not bring ourselves to the point of dealing with the reality of sin, which is the cause of grief. We look at life through the eyes of reason and say that if a person will control his instinct, instincts and educate himself, he can produce a life that will slowly evolve into the life of a God, little g. But as we continue on through life, we find we get saved presence of something which we have not yet taken into account, namely sin. And it upsets all of our thinking and all of our education and all of our plans. Sin has made the foundation of our thinking unpredictable, uncontrollable, and irrational. And what he means by that is how many of us have just been going through the day and all of a sudden something comes into our lives and we reach out and take it. We do it even though we know we shouldn't. We yell at that guy on the street or whatever it happens to be. He's saying that happens. Sin happens like that. We have to recognize that sin is a fact of life, not just a shortcoming. Sin is blatant mutiny against God, and either sin or God must die in my life. The New Testament brings us right down to this one issue. If sin rules in me, God's life in me will be killed. But if God rules in me, sin's life in me will be killed. There's nothing more fundamental than that. The culmination of sin was the crucifixion of Jesus Christ. He took all sins, past, present, and future, upon himself. And what was true in the history of God on earth will also be true in the history of you and me. That is, sin will kill the life of God within us. We must mentally bring ourselves to the term with this fact of sin. It is the only explanation why Jesus Christ came to earth. It is the explanation of the grief and sorrow of life. Sin creates those things. When somebody we love passes on, that's death. That's because of sin, and we grieve because of it. The challenge I have for us today is to find that old song, go on YouTube or whatever you listen to, and find that old hymn, Search Me, O God, and Know My Heart Today. Let it play through several times. And really ask you, is there something there that needs to change? Is there something I'm hiding in my life, Lord, that needs to be given over to you? Let's pray. Father, I thank you for uh, the continuation of Oswald's devotions, uh, really pushing us, Father, into maturity. And I pray, Lord, we would. We'd continue to mature in our Christian walk with you. And, Lord, as the song says, see if there be some wicked way in me. And we pray that you would burn that out of us through your grace and love and let us stand forgiven. We love you, Lord. We look to a new day in you. And we pray this in Christ's name. Amen. God bless. I'll see you tomorrow.